This would be the last HydroCAD video out there and I'm doing it to expose you all to the concept of active systems. And that is a system that has to pump not only against a static head or water against uh, that's not flowing. In other words, the difference in elevations is a static head, but also a dynamic head. And the dynamic head is all of that energy that will be lost through a pipe as water is flowing. Remember, water flows, all fluids flow down pressure. And they have many types of energy, but particularly they have elevation energy per pound of material, which is Y, Z, I'm sorry. In, measured in feet or meters of head. They have pressure energy per pound of material, which is equal to the pressure divided by the unit weight, all in standard units. And they have velocity energy per pound of material, a velocity head, which is one half, I'm sorry, one half V squared over G or V squared over two G, which is a velocity head. So as we know, energy loss is proportional to velocity head. So as the velocity increases, the head lost increases and there's more for the pump to push against. Um, this is true of a sump pump, this is true of any pump. Um, and so that said, we're gonna just do our quintessential design here of a one acre parking lot and point out that this can be done for many other things you have. HydroCAD does have the ability to use and calculate. Um, you can be, you know, other things as long as you're creative about what you do with it. So you're gonna edit this, remember we typically edit we give it a name, one acre area of one acre. We put our areas always in acres just so we can learn to keep track on a curve number. Remember of 98 for pavement, no matter what it is. Time of concentration, five minutes with the edit time of concentration, direct entry, okay, five minutes. Otherwise, you have to calculate based on velocity equation, which is distance over time. All from physics. Hit OK here. Now we're going to bring in a pond. And this time, let's think about this pond. Let's think about what it would need to be if it stored all of the water from a 100-year storm. So let's think about that. It was an acre, so it's going to be at a half an acre foot about of water coming in. So we're going to edit this. And we're going to call it a pond. We almost never use the catch basin. We always put a detention bond even for a catch basin and then mimic the storage. And for now, let's go ahead and we put our invert down at 100. And we're going to use a prismoidal invert at 100. That's the bottom. We'll put a bottom width of 100 by 100, and we have 10,000 square feet if we do that, right? 100 by 100 was 10,000 square feet. In other words, the same as a hectare. So the water would only get a couple feet deep. I'm sorry, uh, 100 by 100 would be 10,000. Half an acre foot wouldn't be very deep. So let's take that down to one fourth the size. Notice, someone noticed out in class, 50 by 50. And our height, we're going to give it a relatively high height of 10, straight up and down, which I don't like to do. So remember, we're always going to run of 0.1. It's always a good idea to get that habit. Nothing, and we're going to hit OK here. We're going to always give it an exit. Let's go back to take a look at that. Edit the storage. So it's 100. It goes up 10. So we're going to give it an exit at 108. Now that exit, they don't have to be in any particular order, but you usually work your day way up. So we're going to edit the storage here. We'll go ahead and we've got the storage done, but we're going to now go ahead to outlets. We're going to edit an outlet. Final outlet first. Click here for edit the outlet. We're going to make a pump down at the bottom and we're just going to, for now, cheese it in. The on elevation is not going to be at the bottom. We're going to turn it on three feet up in the pump, in the, in the pond. The discharge elevation will be at some point where that water is going to be discharging freely to the atmosphere. We'll call that 115. And the length would be the length of the, the pipe, which we know water will lose 
energy as it runs through a pipe due to friction. So we're going to just give this for now, we'll give it a thousand feet. The discharge diameter, we've been doing a lot with larger pipes, so we'll go ahead and do with a 12 inch here. And notice you cannot look up a hazy Williams coefficient, but that has to do with um, 100 being kind of a, a pipe that's pretty much new. It has to do with friction, basically. And then we come over here to the pump rating. And what happens is this pump rating curve has to be put in so the rate goes up. So it's going to be um, the highest head first. So let's say you had pushing against the, this pump something in the order of 50 feet of head. You could take out your calculator and figure out what it's going to do, but you're going to need to put this in in gallons per minute, which is typically how numbers are calculated. Now remember, cubic feet per second can be converted to million gallons per day. It can also be converted to gallons per minute. If you had, for instance, one cubic foot per second, that would be the 7 is 7.48 gallons per second. 7.48 times 60 would get you gallons per minute. So let's put that in our calculator. If I can get that here, 7.48 times 60. So if it's pumping at one CFS, it would be in the order of 448. Not a bad number to know, but why learn it? Learn that there are 7.48 7 gallons in a cubic foot. Now, or 8.34 pounds in a gallon, or 3.781 liters in an American gallon. So I'm going to go here. We're going to assume less head, and then we're going to have more flow. And that typically comes from a pump curve, which is rated by the manufacturer. It has to do with the power equation of Q gamma H. There's also efficiencies involved. And so you can kind of go through here and for now, you can look up pump curves based on what your required discharge is. And let's say, in the very least, if we had 20 feet of, of head, and that now includes all discharge. These are not straight line curves, but you're going to hit OK here. And now you're going to forget, don't forget that we're going to edit our outlet here always. We're going to have some place for the water to get out, most likely at the top, a broad crested weir this time at 108 as we said always model it the length is the length perpendicular to the flow I guess I would call that I'm gonna call that 20 typically the breadth is along the the path of the flow how wide across does the water have to jump I'm gonna go six here and I'm gonna crest profile ID one two and these have to do with different IDs for we're going to go here, breath is, I'm sorry, we're going to go breath, we said six, correct. And it should calculate something there. We're not going to do any backflow, tail water, though you have to realize that if downstream, there is downstream pushing back, that you need to uh, allow for that. And that can be a serious uh, issue. Uh, if water is downstream and you're releasing it, but the water downstream is pushing back, you don't actually have free flow. So we have those all laid out. We can now reroute as we've learned before, right clicking 2P, hit OK. And now we always have to calculate, put in the rainfall data. I'll start, remember, with six inches as I've talked about this. And then you start to go down for different rainfall events, 100-YR. In other words, this hopefully will fill up, right? And then you see how the pump pumps to a point here and then stops pumping and that's because it has pumped it not dry but down to a level where it is uh, at the, the, the pump on. So in other words we put the pump on lower which we can do now. We can go here back we can edit I'm right clicking we can go to our outlets we can go to the pump we can edit that pump it's not turning on at 103. You can turn it on, for instance, at 102 and see how much better you are. For a rainfall storm, it's not going to make a big difference because the water comes pretty quick. But it will pump longer. I'll go down a little bit more here. And you can, obviously, there's pump ons, there's two pumps, there's three pumps, there's other things you can do, put pumps in parallel. This is the calculation that is done for a lift station. 
Many of them are have to be duplexing, which means you've got a couple of pumps, sometimes one runs, sometimes both runs. So this kind of this concept of pump curves can get relatively ornate. Um, one thing we do not do, we do not put a typically a gate valve downstream of a pump. That's a recipe for disaster. So we're going to edit it one more time. Remember the outlets here. It is the pump that we're dealing with. I can go ahead and change it now, put it all the way up to 107 and see how it does. Hit OK, right click, node report, and you notice that peak elevation of 106.91. In other words, the water never got there. Notice there it never got there. So we can put our pump at 106 now. Edit, outlets, and we'll just pump out some of the water and let the rest potentially go to the ground, which we can add in the last minute here. So we're going to hit OK, right click, node report, and if you notice there, you didn't really get much flow because it pumped down pretty quickly. 106. Now, if you start to look here, the inflow area, the peak elevation is 105.88. Let's look how sometimes these calculators, you have to start looking at the... So we're setting at 106, and you actually got no... Uh, the pump never should have... Oh, that's the invert at 106. And the pump on is what I'm not collecting. So you want to double check that you changed the on elevation of 106. That's when it starts. And if I hit OK here, OK, OK, hit a right click, 105.88, which I, means if I go and head above there, it should not change that. I'm going to edit it now, edit my outlets, edit the outlet. If I now make that 107, the number should not change. And if it does, you've probably got a problem with the modeling. Fly, OK. Right click, 106.91. And you notice here, it's kind of interesting that you haven't changed anything except for pull it up and it's changing the numbers on the calculation. So uh, that's of interest, I believe, that it is, you need to kind of look and evaluate. These models will sometimes figure things out. One thing you definitely want to do if you're storing water is you would like to be, enter the time span earlier than the fifth hour of the storm and hit OK here. Now when you do node report, you start to see it's back to 106.91. We'll go back one last time as we finish this out. You're kind of organizing beforehand, but just be, be aware of how uh, the ability of a pump to pump is controlled by not only the water it's pushing against, but also something called the net positive suction head. We know that theoretically we, can, we cannot pull water up than 30, more than 33.9 feet because water is not being pulled up, it's being pushed. And we know that the pressure of 14.7 pounds per square inch is the same as one kilogram force per square centimeter is the same as one atmosphere is the same as 14.7 PSI is the same as 2116.8 pounds per square foot is the same as 760 millimeters of mercury as we dis discovered back in soils class pressure comes in many many forms and flavors before we finish out here I'm going to go back and edit that go back to outlets edit that outlet here and I'm going to bring the pump back down to 104 and see what it does for me now okay okay right click node report and you see that pump running for a ways there. All right, so that's how pumps work. And you notice here, you want to check your warnings. My pump rating curve is not laid out for the amount of head that I'm running through. Thanks for listening. Give it a try, especially those of you who have ponds. Do try to put a pump in the system to get extra or full credit in your projects.